Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for adding yet another day unto our lives. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. This is your meeting. This is your time. When we get to hear from you. So, Father, here we are. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me as we continue to look at the word. We thank God that we are not moved by what we hear or by what we see, but that we carry on holding on and trusting to his promises. So we have been looking at enough is enough. The question that I first asked on Monday when we began this topic was, when is enough enough? When is enough enough? Are you content with where you are? Do you feel that it's about time that you make a change? Because change is in the air. God is moving things right where we are behind the scenes. We are not seeing what God is doing, but I can assure you that God is working behind the scenes. So this morning, I want to begin by sharing a story. And here goes the story. A couple walked into a, a pizza place on a night where a buffet is served. And the food bar was full of pizza, spaghetti, breadsticks, cheese sticks, uh, salads, whatever you can think about. So the, the, the couple walks in there and the husband asked if they could have two buffets. If they could have two buffets, you know, and this time um, the, the, the time was about 8 p.m. All right. So it was about 10 past 8 p.m. Sorry, 10 past 8 p.m. And he asked, can we please have two buffets? The guy who was saving said, I am sorry. The buffet was over at 8 p.m. Remember, the couple had walked into the restaurant at 10 past 8. And then the guy saving says the buffet was over at 8 p.m. Then the man said thank you and left and went to another restaurant. His wife said, why did we leave? Why did we leave that restaurant? Why did we have to come into another restaurant? And the man said, I refuse to stay in a place where I can see it and smell it but can't partake. I refuse to stay in a place where I can see it and smell it, but can't partake of it or possess it. It's not enough just to be close to it. It's not enough just to be in a place where it's happening. It's not enough just to walk by and look at it and smell it. It's not enough to sit around watching others enjoy it. Watching other people enjoy theirs and I can't have any. It's frustrating. I was late and I missed it. That was the answer. You get it, right? At the verge of getting it. At the verge of getting it. And here is this couple that has arrived 10 minutes, 10 minutes late. And they have missed it. And this man is determined. He says, I cannot stay in a place where I can smell it. I can see others enjoy it. And I cannot partake of it. What am I saying to you today? What am I saying to you today? That it frustrates your faith. 
It frustrates your faith to sit down on the edge of your breakthrough. It frustrates my faith to sit down on the edge of my breakthrough and just talk about how good it could be or will it uh, will be one of these days. Faith is a possessor. Faith is a possessor. And this morning we have got to understand, it has to sink in us that enough is enough. Enough is enough. Some of us, some of us in a spiritual sense are doing that very thing. We are walking around the buffet table. We are walking around the buffet table of God's blessings and promises and we are satisfied just to look it over and smell it over and talk to each other about how good it could be or how good it should be. Mm, wouldn't that do something? Wouldn't it be great if I were healed? Wouldn't it be great if I was prosperous? Wouldn't it be great if I were healed? Wouldn't it be great if I, I could get married? Wouldn't it be great if I could begin a business? Wouldn't it be great if I could get a job? Mm -hmm. Think about that. We are sitting at the edge. We are watching others enjoy it. And we cannot have it because we have missed it. How many of us are there? Wouldn't it be great? If I walked in the anointing of my calling, wouldn't it be great if you could walk in the anointing of your purpose? But here comes somebody. Here comes somebody. Somebody who got there on time and paid the, the price and they have been enjoying everything you have been looking at. They decided enough is enough. They decided they were not going to hang around at the edge of their breakthrough. They decided, I have had enough of being here. I have had enough of being in my comfort zone. I have had enough of the comfort mat. And they are now enjoying it. They paid the price and they enjoyed it. They made the sacrifice. They took a step of faith and they are enjoying what you should be enjoying too. They've been enjoying everything you've been looking at, thinking, talking about, and what happened. You have just been talking about it. Instead of being glad for them, now you are mad. Instead of rejoicing with them, now you are mad. Why? Because they got what you wanted. They got what you wanted, but you weren't willing to move. You were comfortable where you are. You didn't want to make a move when it was time to move. And you didn't want to pay the price. You didn't want to sacrifice. You didn't want to get off that mat. You didn't want to leave. They are enjoying it. And now you are mad. Well, you have to excuse me. You have to excuse me. I really don't want to you to get mad at me. But the fact is, I am going to enjoy my breakthrough. Will you enjoy it with me? I am going to enjoy my blessing. Will you enjoy it with me? I am going to get my breakthrough. I am going to get my miracle. I believe I am getting to my personal promised land. And I believe that you will too. Let us do it together. Because I would like us to enjoy it together. If you are being blessed, I am also being blessed. We have had enough. We have had enough. Well, if you feel like you want to stand around and watch, if you feel like you want to criticize those that are enjoying the breakthrough, if you feel like you want to analyze, you, you want to call those that are enjoying their bre breakthrough undignified or selfish, that is your, your, your problem. 
You can talk about us who are going to enjoy. You can put us down. You can't keep us out of what God has said he will do for us. God has said he would give it to us. He's a promise keeper. He watches over his way to fulfill it in our lives. And we are ready to receive the promises that he has for us. So we are going to enjoy the promises of God. We are going to spend the rest of our lives talking about this God, this good God, this God who loves us too much, oh, the one who promises good things. So will you join me? Will you join me on this journey? Because enough is enough. We cannot continue. We cannot be content with the situation as it is. I was speaking to someone yesterday that said to me, ah, Pastor Mary, I've had enough. I'm tired of this COVID. I am tired of this virus. It's sickness. It's positive. It's death. Well, we have got to be on our knees and seek his face. We have got to use whatever we can because God is able. God is able. You cannot sit back and watch the enemy destroy the things that God says are for us. Faith. Take a step of faith. Faith will never be satisfied just to look at it. Faith will never be satisfied just to look at it, think about it, or talk about how good it must be. No, faith will never. Faith possesses it. Faith possessed it. Faith don't settle for less. That's what I know faith is. It doesn't settle for less. Faith says, according to the word of God, it's mine and I am having it and I am having it right now. Now, faith is now. Faith possessed it. Faith, faith, faith says, according to the word of God, it is mine. I am having it. And I am having it right now. Enough is enough. It is time for change. Enough is enough. It is time for change. For, the, for 40 years, for 40 years, the first generation of the children of Israel wandered around in the wilderness till the doubters, those that doubted, all died off. All they could do was talk about what they missed. Because they wouldn't move. They wouldn't move. They were just talking about how it was impossible to enter the promised land that God had promised them. Because they wouldn't move. When it was time to move, they wouldn't pay the price. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning or teaching, whatever you may call it this morning. But until now, you have been satisfied just to be close. Until now, you have been satisfied just to think about it. Until now, you have been satisfied just to sing about it. Until now, you have been satisfied just to dream about it. But I am telling you right now, it's time to move. It's time to pay the price. Enough is enough. It is time for change. Enough is enough. If you don't make a move, you are going to frustrate yourself. You are going to frustrate your faith. Somebody needs to get on your feet and begin to do something. You need to begin moving. Take a prophetic step right now wherever you are and say I am moving. I am beginning to move. Somebody needs to dance. Somebody needs to, to claim their blessing. If you can't walk stomp, stomp your feet. If you can't stomp your feet, wave your hands wherever you can do. You, you, you are. Make that prophetic step this morning. Drop that pride and do something to say, I am on my way. I am on my way. I am possessing what the Lord has given me. You have circled this mountain long enough. You have got to move from where you are. You have got to look up because your help only comes from God. This is just another way of saying it's time for change. Enough is enough. It's time for change. 
I don't know if I am talking to somebody this morning, but in the natural, when it's time for the seasons to change, you feel it in the atmosphere. Sometimes there is a period of a tug of war as, as, as one season gives way to another. I am just wondering, is anybody feeling what I am talking about this morning? Is somebody feeling the tugging, the pulling, the agency in the atmosphere? Changes in the atmosphere I used to be. I used to be, but it used to be that we were satisfied. I used to be one of those that felt, ah, here is where we are. You know, I used to just, you know, it's like you can just accept. No, 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 no. But now I am not comfortable. I am not comfortable where I am. I am not satisfied anymore. In fact, I am uncomfortable. I am disturbed. I am agitated. I am even frustrated. Does anybody know what I I am talking about because enough is enough. We cannot be content with what the situation has brought us where we are. We find ourselves in. Yes, you can't just sit there with your arms folded. You can't just watch worldliness coming to into the into the church. You can't just not say anything. You can't just sit there and see the name of the Lord being brought to shame. You can't just sit there and not say anything. You can't just sit there while they preach, teach, uh, and teach wrong doctrines. You know, they teach wrong doctrines and we are just seated. We are just watching. They say any road you choose will get you to heaven. Who said that? Because the Bible says no one comes to the father except through me. But this is what now is being taught. Any road you choose, you get to heaven. And do not say anything. We sit there and we don't say anything. And they say that everybody is saved already. They just don't know it. But we know that you can only get saved by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. They say that we'll all be saved in the end. Hmm? And there is not really such a thing as right and wrong. It's just what you choose and whatever you choose is right. Who said that? We have got to make a choice between right and wrong, death and, li uh, and life. We have got to make a choice. We can't just sit around and see people be, uh, get mislaid by wrong teachings and wrong doctrines. You can't just sit there and act like everything is okay. No, we can't. We accept certain lifestyles. We accept that, you know, it's fine. They were born homosexual. They were born lesbians. It's fine. They can be ordained and pastors, ministers of the gospel. And we sit there and we say nothing. Hear the spirit of the God saying, it is time for change. It is time for change. I have been in trouble for preaching the gospel undiluted, for praying as it is, but it is okay because I have got to preach the gospel for what it is. I have got to say it for what it is. If I don't say it, who is going to say it? I don't want God to hold me accountable because I was misleading people. Enough is enough. It is time for change. And I believe that this time, God is promoting and elevating those who have been faithful. God is promoting and elevating those who are not compromising. There is change in the atmosphere. And part of that change is God's people are getting fed up. You and I are getting fed up. Somebody is getting a backbone. Somebody is getting the bows to be able to preach the undiluted word of God. God is raising up men and women, boys and girls who are not ashamed of the gospel and will not bow to the spirit of this age and will not compromise in their faith. Are you with me this morning? Because enough is enough. It is time for change. Hallelujah. It is time for change. Maybe you have been feeling uncomfortable. Maybe you have been feeling agitated, even frustrated. And you don't know why. Here is part of the reason. You were created for more. 
You were created for more. You were created to possess more of the power of God and more of the manifestation of his glory. You were created with the capacity to carry the same anointing that Jesus had and to do the same works and even greater works than he did. That's what he says in John 14 verses 12. John 14 verses 12, the pain, the discomfort, the agitation, the frustration is your spirit telling you it's time for change. It's time for change. When my feet are hurting, I know it's time for change. I know it's time for a new pair of shoes, maybe even bigger shoes. Do you feel the change? When my eyes start hating, I know it's time for a change in my prescription. In my prescription, oh, I lost my glasses. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, provide stuff. Oh, heal my eyes, Lord. I am talking to somebody who's agitated and stirred up in your spirit because you sense God calling you to another level. It's time to get to another level. We have now officially entered the second half of the year. Today is the first of July. Things have got to change, my people. We are about to even uh, uh, reach the end of this year. Are you going to stay wallowing in your pain, in your disappointment, in your betrayal? Are you going to get out of that mess? Are you going to rise up, carry your mat and begin to walk? Are you going to do any, everything in your power to make sure that you get to where God wants you to get to? God is calling you and I to another level. Enough is enough. It's time for change. Many times the agitation and the frustration that you feel is the unwillingness of the flesh to, to make the necessary adjustment. But enough is enough. It's time for change. And today somebody is going to say, yes, I have got to get up. Begin to do something. Begin to do something. Today, somebody is letting go of the past, I believe. Moving with God and paving, uh, paying the price. And you are going to see the glory of God. It's time for change. Enough is enough. It's time for change in your life. It's time for change in your ministry, in your family, in your wisdom, in your finances, in your health. In your understanding, in your relationships, in your anointing, it's time for change because enough is enough. Enough is enough. It's time for change. Is there somebody this morning who knows it's time for change in your life? Take it. It's time for change. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 3 verses 18. 2 Corinthians 3 verses 18. But we all with open face, beholding has in a glass the glory of God, are changed in the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. From glory to glory. We don't go down as children of the Most High God. We only move from glory to glory. We go from better to best. We don't go down. You have circled this mountain long enough. Look up. It's time for change. It's time for change. You have got to speak to yourself and tell yourself enough is enough. You have got to look up. You have got to lift your head up for your redemption draws near. You have circled this mountain long enough. Enough is enough and it is time for change. Will you take that step, that prophetic step? Come on now. I don't know what the enemy is throwing in your, in your life. Maybe you are sick. Maybe you got infected with COVID. Come on. Get up. Get up because you can do it. 
You have got to get up. You have got to walk in that room if you are in isolation. You have got to move around. You have got to tell yourself, this will not keep me down. When I get out of this room, I am going to move. I am going to do what you have called me to do. I am tired of blaming others for the miracle that I have missed. It is me, after all, that allowed the enemy to snatch it out of my hand. You have got to stop blaming people for what should have been in your life because you alone are responsible for making the change in your life. We saw yesterday that that man was told by Jesus, get up, pick up your mat and walk. We saw yesterday that Jesus did not tell that man's friends or the people who are at the pool to help him pick up the mat. Did he? Did Jesus speak in tongues? We said no. Did Jesus lay hands? Did Jesus say, come on, you are lame, let me help you? No. Jesus is the one that spoke and said, pick up your mat and walk. I don't know where you are at, but I believe that Jesus is speaking to you and I. We have had so many things. People have betrayed us. People have stabbed us in the back, but we serve a God that will never do such a thing to us. You have got to leave the past in the past because you cannot take the past into the future. The future is full of the goodness of God. Remember the goodness of God pursues us. It follows us. It runs after us. We have got to let go of the things that have happened in the past. Stop blaming the neighbors. Stop blaming your work colleagues and take responsibility of your lives. Do what you can do and allow God to do the rest. Everything else shall be okay. It doesn't matter that we are sick in this moment but we believe that 2000 years ago, God healed us. He dealt with every disease that we are facing, including this so new, so-called new one, coronavirus. It was dealt with 2,000 years ago and we are not moved by what it's doing. We are not shaken by what it's doing. We shall rise up. I believe that we serve a God who builds from the ashes. We shall be able to rise up. I believe that he's a God who makes sure that all things work together for good. I love the word of God because it says all things work together for good. He does not say only this and this and this and this. It says all things work together for good. All things includes everything that we have faced. Oh Jesus, everything that we have faced during this time. Those that, that have lost jobs, those that have lost loved ones, those that have lost marriages, those that have lost businesses, whatever, everything work together for good. At the end of the day, he's a good shepherd. I may be in the valley. The valley is looking so deep. The valley is looking so dangerous. But I thank God that the good shepherd walks with me. So I don't care what the enemy is saying or what he's doing what is throwing in my camp the Lord the good shepherd has said this is the route that we are taking to your personal promised land I will follow the good shepherd because he has not left me he's right behind me I refuse to stay behind and wallow in my pity my pitiful situation and cry over spilt milk I am going to walk beside the good shepherd he prepares a table in the presence of my enemy it is can only be God that can do such. While those that were laughing at you, while those that were saying you will come to nothing, while people think that you are going to lose your mind, you are going to lose it because now everything that you had has been taken away from you. Oh, Shatara Bariando. We serve a God who is able to do it. He's able to turn situations around. He is a good God. So we begin by getting up. The man had resources inside of him. He had the potential inside of him. The potential and the capacity was inside of him. What potential, Pastor Mary? It was the capacity, the potential to be able to get up and carry his own mat. To be able to get up and carry his own mat. You and I have got the potential to be able to do something. To be able to do something about our situation. One of these days we're going to be laughing. 
We're going to be smiling. We're going we're gonna to testify of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We're going to be rejoicing because we save a God that is turning our pain into something good. It's, we save a God who is enlarging our territory and we are saying enough is enough. We are getting up. We are getting up. We are not defeated. We have victory on our side. With that said, we're going to stop here this morning. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Mundere basaya. Yokorobosia. Father, we refuse to smell the change. We refuse to talk about the change. But Lord, we choose, Father, to go with you to the next level. Father, we thank you for such an awakening in our spiritual lives. Lord, as we move, Makanda Rabasaya, as we move, Father God, to our next level, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are thanking you because you are moving with us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we refuse to blame anyone, but we take responsibility of our situations. We take responsibility of our uh, situations. Father, thank you for the resources, for the potential that is in us. We thank you for the potential that is in us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are praying, mighty God. Oh, Rabasanda Rabasaya, we are praying, mighty God, that we will be able to depend upon you as we move to the next level in Jesus' name. Father, right now, I bring everyone that is not well in the mighty name of Jesus. Every person that is exempting Father God, that is showing COVID symptoms, every person that has tested positive. Father, I do not have to mention them by name. Those who are connected to me, those who are connected to anyone on this platform, even to those that are going to hear the message later on. Father, we are praying unto you because we know who you are. You are the God that sent your word and you healed our diseases. Father, we are praying for healing. We are trusting you for healing in the mighty name of Jesus. We are praying that your children, Father, will be able to be strengthened, that your children will be able to get up from the their sick bed, that Lord, you will bring back that taste in their mouth, that Father, you will heal their throat, that Lord, you will cause them to be able to breathe in and out, the pain in their chest, the, the, the pain in their chest, the, the tightness of chest. Father, we are praying that Lord, you alone are bringing comfort unto them. Remove every discomfort in their bodies. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are trusting you for healing, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command Father God, that every symptom, every after effect of COVID, Father, shall disappear. May they be no traces of COVID in their bodies. In the mighty name of Jesus, those that are in isolation homes, those that are in isolation rooms in their homes, those that are in ICUs, those that are on ventilating machine, we send the word of God and we are commanding healing, Father. We believe healing is our daily bread. We walk in your healing, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, protect us, preserve us, hide us from this attack of this enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, those that have lost loved ones, Lord, we look to you for comfort. We thank you that you comfort us. Father, we thank you that the word of God says to be absent from their body is to be present with the Lord. We thank you that our loved ones are in your presence, oh God. We thank you that, Father, you have removed them from the troubles of this life. You have removed them from the trouble of this world. And so, Father, we commit ourselves unto you that us who have remained behind, Father, you will help us. Help us to follow all the hygiene measures, all the preventative measures. I pray for every business that has suffered due to COVID-19 in the mighty name of Jesus.
Begin to build from the ashes. Enough is enough. It is time for change like you have spoken. Father, we are believing you that you will build those jobs in the mighty name of Jesus. Those that are crying for employment, Father, you alone are going to provide employment when others are not employing. Father, we are the children of the Most High God. We do not confess what the world says. We do not look at the economy of the world, but we look to you, Yahweh, and so we are trusting you that, Father, you will provide jobs in Jesus' name. You will provide financial breakthroughs. Those that have lost so much, you will provide financial breakthrough. You will provide finances for our businesses to take off. You will provide finances, Father, for our ministry work. You will provide finances for us to be paid our to be able to pay our bills. Lord, we lay our spiritual hands on all our bills and we are looking to you, Father. We are trusting you, Father, for supernatural debt cancellation. Nothing is impossible with you. Yeah, way we are trusting you. Our eyes are on you, Father. Help us. Help us. And today we pray that as we go about our daily activities, Father, be with us. Guide us. Shield us. Protect us. We pray coming against fear. Coming against hopelessness. Spirit of hopelessness. We pray coming against anxiety. We pray that, Father, we shall rest in you. That those that have lost hope, Father, you will show them that you are still in control. Those that are feeling anxious because of COVID-19, that, Father, you will calm them down. You will show them that you have not given them a spirit of fear. You have given them a spirit of love, power, sound mind, my Father. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, indeed we shall rest upon you because, Father, you are the good shepherd and you are with us. We thank you, Father, today. We pray, Father, leaving everything in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining me. Just a reminder that next week we are going to fast from Monday to Friday. We are fasting from Monday to Friday. Please, please start weaning yourself off that sugar, off that coffee. Start taking it easy because next week is a big week. So we are believing that we God will save. He's going to hear us. He's been hearing us. But we are going to join our voices together as we pray unto God next week. We will spend a few minutes in sharing the word and the rest of the time will be spent in prayer. So uh, please, please, please uh, prepare yourselves for that. Otherwise, I love and I appreciate each one of you. Let us continue covering one another, praying for one another. Thank you.